We've got a big update on the number one pitching prospect on the planet that could be a Dodger by as early as next season. That's coming up next here on Dodgers Dugout. What's going on, Dodgers Nation? Doug McCain here, credentialed member of Dodgers Media. You can follow me on X at Instagram at DMAC underscore LA. Now, if you haven't yet, do me a huge favor. It is my birthday today, so if you want to give me a present, subscribe to the Dodgers Nation YouTube channel, the number one Dodgers YouTube channel in the game. Hit that subscribe button. Hit that notification bell. Hit that like button. And also, I want your comments down below. Give me all your takes on Roki Sasaki. Do you think he'll end up in Dodger blue on a scale of 1 to 10, how high are you on Roki Sasaki? I want all your Sasaki takes down below in the comments section. And for all latest Dodgers news, head over to DodgersNation.com. It's time for Dodger Baseball. And that's right play. Dodgers have won it all in 2020. Mookie Betts. Craig Schultz. Left field. I don't care how many times this team rips my heart out, I'll never stop loving the Los Angeles Dodgers. Think blue, bleed blue, and I'm out. Roki Sasaki, the top prospect in all of baseball, the top prospect on the planet in this man's opinion. You saw a couple weeks ago a video surface of Dodgers president Andrew Friedman in Japan before the WBC last year. They're in person to scout him. The Dodgers have been on him for a long, long time, and he's still extremely young. He's just 22 years old. We you talk about stuff, we've done a full breakdown of how he pitches on the mound, how good and electric. This guy's a flamethrower. This guy has a lethal forkball, an electric fastball. If you want to watch a full breakdown of his ability as a pitcher, we'll drop that down below in the description. But the big update for Roki Sasaki is that after days of speculation, Sasaki and the Chibalote Marines have come to an agreement on a contract for the 2024 season. And the bigger news here is that Sasaki has made it abundantly clear that he intends to pitch in the show in 2025, that he wants to make the jump to the major leagues by next season. He told reporters in Japan, I have the desire to play in the U.S. major leagues in the future. I've been communicating every year. I believe the club understands it too. So he didn't specifically say 2025, but there are a lot of reports out there that indicate that he was trying to get out as early as this offseason and make the jump along with Yoshinobu Yamamoto. But the Chibalote Marine Marines, they did not grant him that. So let's rewind a little bit here to see where we're at with Roki Sasaki. Because before agreeing to the new deal, there were reports that Sasaki was holding out until he received assurance from the Marines that they would post him to MLB after the 2024 season. Reports out of Japan also suggested that the Japanese pitching phenom and the Marines had formed an agreement back in 2019, reaffirmed that agreement in 2022, that they were going to post him early. But since the Marines have backtracked and the two sides have quibbled on how early he was going to be posted. Sasaki requested Chibalote to post him earlier this winter, but the club denied his early posting request because in their their eyes, Sasaki hadn't sufficiently contributed to the team, but Sasaki's side argued that he had and that the Marines never clearly defined what exactly sufficiently contributed meant. And if I'm Roki Sasaki, I'm saying to myself, okay, I'm someone who pitched a perfect game, who has had so much success on the mound. Last season, he was limited to 91 innings in 2023 due to an oblique injury, but he still posted a 178 ERA, had 135 punch outs, just 17 walks, and in three years with the Marines, he has a two ERA with a 6.71 strikeout to walk ratio. He has been dominant. He has been electric. So I don't think, of course, is his performance, his individual ability. They just want more years out of him, right? They want him to go those six years, to get up until he's 25, because that means more money for the club. Now, the LA Times and other Japanese outlets have reported that his contract may include an official early posting clause, but there's been no official confirmation from the Marines or Sasaki's representatives. So the big question is, does he have that clause in his contract that allows him to leave before he's 25, before he pitches for six years, like we saw with Shohei Otani, where Otani essentially said, hey, I don't care about the money. It's not about the Benjamins. It's about the baseball, right? I want to take my talents to the show and play with the 
best players on the planet to face the toughest competition, and that money will come when it does, and it certainly did for Shohei Otani, even though he won't see most of it until 2034. But we're going to dip back into this Roki Sasaki story because it's so fascinating because you have an elite talent, one of the best we've ever seen come out of Japan, and the big stranglehold here is when will the Marines post him, and will they do it knowing that it's going to cost them money? Because the Marines, they want to keep him up until he's 25 years old because of how lucrative it would be for them. If they were able to keep him until then, the Marines would receive 15 to 20% of whatever free agent contract he would ultimately sign. And barring a significant injury, that contract would exceed $300 million. It could even exceed $400 million. When you look at Sasaki's age, 23 is the age he would be, presumably, if he gets that opportunity. And then, even if it's a little later, you're going to see him get a deal close to what Yamamoto got if he enters when he's 25. So, we're talking about a ton of money for them, 15 to 20% of a 300 to $400 million contract. But if he leaves before 25 and they do post him, the Marines would bring home under $1 million because Sasaki will be subjected to the international bonus pool money. And we've already seen this offseason. The Dodgers were very selective with that money. They did not spend as much as we've seen in years past. And most people within the industry think that has a lot to do with Roki Sasaki and his possible availability next offseason. Now, when it comes to Roki Sasaki in the future, it really remains to be seen if he can get the Marines to let him out. If they get the Marines to post him, I personally believe that they probably will. Will it be next season? That would be huge. That would be massive. He would be the best starting pitcher available as far as the kind of contract he would require. And if he is available as soon as next offseason, it's going to be huge. And if it's that's with the Dodgers, just think about what that would mean. I mean, talk about a contract they would have to pay him. You just committed over a billion dollars, right? You paid big premium money for the Otanis, Teoscar Hernandez, Yoshinobu Yamamoto. But look what Otani got. The signing bonus for the Angels back when he signed with them there in the offseason after the 2017 season heading into 2018. He had a $2.315 million signing bonus and then had to... Get a minor league deal, right? Yes, you made a ton of endorsements, but you're talking about an elite player that earned a lot less because he was posted early. Is Roki Sasaki willing to do that? It feels like he absolutely is. He's indicated he absolutely is, and I think that is going to be the case. So just imagine that. The Dodgers, they get an elite talent, a guy that could get $30, $40 million per year potentially for international bonus pool money. Right? And a minor league contract. I mean, that would be the ultimate, just the rich get richer. You think they're mad about the Dodgers getting Otani and Yamamoto now? Just think about how mad they'll be when they get Roki Sasaki. Twitter will burn. Okay, the Dodgers will be one of the most hated teams in baseball history. The villains, right? Especially because they'll be probably coming off a World Series title. But just picture this. Let's try to manifest this a little bit. Let's LeVar ball this a little bit. Let's look at a potential rotation next season. You got Shohei Otani returning. You have Yoshinobu Yamamoto. You have a Tyler Glass now. You have a Bobby Miller and then a Roki Sasaki. You could also have Clayton Kershaw back in the fold. You have a lot of young talent in this organization. You have the River Ryans, the Nick Frassos, the Gavin Stones, the Michael Groves. The list goes on and on. And it's just an embarrassment of pitches. It truly would be the murderer's rotation. And Roki Sasaki, you have to get excited. I mean, this is someone who is a generational player. I urge you to watch some of the breakdowns we've done of his pitching abilities. And I'll drop those down below in the description. But what you need to know from this is that Roki Sasaki has come to terms on a new deal with his club. Things aren't pretty between them. I mean, you look at some of the other details there with him. I mean, he reportedly withdrew from the Players Association in Japan. That's nothing that you want to feel good about if you're the Marines. He clearly has one foot out the door and wants to play in the show and sees what's happening with the Dodgers. And you would love 
to have him a part of that. But that's going to do it for this episode of Dodgers Dugout. Just a little quick update on Roki Sasaki. We're going to cover the Sasaki saga, all things Sasaki, until he signs with the Dodgers. So expect anything and everything from Roki Sasaki all season long. But that is going to do it. My name is Doug McCain. You can follow me on X and Instagram at DMAC underscore LA. By the way, thank you guys for the birthday wishes. Can't thank you enough. Really appreciate that. Look, after getting Otani and Yamamoto, I don't need another birthday present for the rest of my life. Maybe a World Series. I'll take one World Series, but I am good. And how about a present for next year? Let's add a Roki Sasaki, okay? So, yeah, thank you guys so much. Really, really appreciate it. See you guys. Show me that love down below in the comment section. I just want to thank you guys. 80,000 subscribers. We can't do it without you guys. You guys are the biggest part of this, the number one part of this. I'm the man, the fan. Uh, your show, I'm just hosting, like I always say, and can't thank you guys enough, and I really appreciate it. But that's going to do it. Remember, nothing brings us together quite like Dodger baseball. And until next time, think blue, bleed blue, and I'm out. 